Today we talk about a guy who does not just know how to make surfboards, but he also knows how to make his own branded tent for demo days, when the company he paid to make a custom one just doesn't ship the tent in time. Blake Peters is part owner of the Forgotten Surplus Shop in Costa Mesa, where they have Panda Doinkers available for demo. You may remember the Panda Doinker from a previous episode that was really a shocker to me because it got a lot more views than some other episodes that I released at the time in 2013 that featured more well-known brands like Lost or Superbrand. More recently, this year in March, Blake got attention when Julian Wilson rated his B2 model shortboard ahead of competing board models from brands like Sharpeye, Channel Islands, and Simon Anderson in Stab Mag's excellent Stab in the Dark series, which I'll link to down below. But today we'll set aside all that high-performance stuff for an episode and talk about the Doinker's new cousin, the Doinker Egg. This episode is presented by Fanatic, who gives you the power to select fins online, receive them in the mail, surf them for as long as you want, and then send that set of fins back to receive another set of fins to try. Sign up for their basic membership with promo code SHRED, that's S-H-R-E-D, and receive your first month for free at Fanatic.com. If you live in Newport Beach, California, then you are used to seeing Colin Moran surfing like this. But in this clip, he's doing some uncommonly cruisy, lazy looking surfing on a doinker egg in some lined up cold waves that I wouldn't mind surfing this afternoon because this looks really fun to me. Dimensions on this board are 5.9 by 20 and 5.8 by 2.5 with 35.45 liters of volume. And when you look at the outline of this shape, it looks like that smooth, elliptical outline that we've all seen in one form or another with a widish nose tapering back into a pinny narrower tail. But if you compare this board to similar outlines at a surf shop near you, you'd probably find that the nose is about one or two inches wider at the 12 inch mark of the board. And if you grab the rail, you would find that it's very noticeably fuller without any of that angling down. Just a very generously full floaty rail. So you look at that. Across similar lengths, you would probably also find that this board is around a quarter to a half inch wider at the center while being roughly the same thickness at center as other shapes that you might compare this to. All of these things add a lot more float and foam into this shape and make it much more of a compressed short length egg instead of a high performance fish. And these changes help create the sort of fluid, flowy, gentle surfing that we see Colin doing in these clips, where you may as well be drinking a cup of coffee and enjoying some huevos rancheros while you are surfing, instead of intensely concentrating on finding the doggy door exit of a beach break closeout on your shortboard like we see Colin doing in this clip. Rolled V in the nose, rolled V transitioning really quickly, becoming a double concave. A double concave happening within a single concave from rail to rail. Still a double, becoming flat out the tail. So if you look at this board from around 17 inches into it, there's nothing down there anchoring the board into the water from about here back. So what might that mean? Well, from about this point forward, the rolled V up in the nose can help with breaking through chop as you're paddling into the wave or just as you're surfing forward. But the rest of the concaves on this board are all about creating a a little bit of lift and forward motion. And you'd probably find that those kind of bottom contours on a shape like this orient this shape for forward projection and down the line drive and burning speed off on the shoulders to cut back to the wave's power source. You see the same thing in the rocker. It's obviously a very low rocker throughout. And if you were to measure this, you'd probably find about the sort of rocker curve you'd expect moving out towards the tail. But up in the nose, the rocker is a little bit lower than what you might expect, maybe even by as much as a half of an inch. Now when most surfers think about an egg surfboard, myself included, we think about something that's like seven or eight feet long. But if you were to surf this shape, you would probably find that it feels like a shorter version of a very easy to surf egg. That means that cruisy easy surfing might be accessible to intermediate all the way to advanced surfers on this shape. and it may 
also be a nice transition board if you're relatively new to surfing and have been surfing on like a seven or an eight foot board. This shape could be a nice option for going shorter for the first time. I think this shape would probably be especially fun if you have access to the sort of lined up waves that we've seen in this clip because nothing in this shape is really optimized for any tight pivot off the bottom or pivot up in the lip like Panda's other short boards, for example, the Bangers and Mash or the Pandemonium. Shred Nation, I will link more about this board down below this video, so check that out. Also, I will put a link to Panda Surfboard's Instagram, which is, I just think that the captions are awesome. If you are surfing a Doinker Egg or any other shapes by Panda, tell us what you think in the YouTube comments down below, and I can't wait to see you soon on Shred Show.